Namaste Sarasati Devi Gauravani Pracharine Nirvishesha Shunava Paschacha Deshita Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Huh? Appearance. Appearance. 
appearance. Uh, so the appearance day of Bhaktivinoda Thakur on Sunday is a half day fast, but there should be a feast at lunchtime. You should observe it with a feast. And even what happened one time in Los Angeles, the devotees were planning, we'll have a feast in the evening. So they didn't cook a feast at lunchtime. And they said, no, we'll have the feast in the evening. Because people are all coming in the evening, they're not going to come in the daytime. And Prabhupada said, what? He said, no, you have to have a feast in lunch. And Prabhupada personally went into the kitchen, cooked and made a feast for the, I think it was for Bhakti Siddhartha Sarasati that time. But anyway, Prabhupada was very particular about these different observances which we have to follow. And so in devotional service we have to observe these different things, like ekadasi. Sometimes people think ekadasi is just simply meant for fasting. But more important than fasting is to increase our hearing and chanting. And there was an incident which took place in the Gaudiya Mat with Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati Prabhupada present at the time that the devotees were observing fasting on Ekadasi. And then an invitation came for a program. Again, somebody came and he asked the devotee, he said, please come, I'm having a program, I want you to come and do kirtan and preach there. And they said, oh, no, no, we're all fasting, it's the Kadasi. But when Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati was told this, he told the devotees, he said, then cook prasada and take prasada and go for the program. He did not want them to stop the preaching. So Ekadasi doesn't mean you stop the preaching. But we're meant to increase the preaching. It's an auspicious day. Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur has written in his uh, Sharanagati. Sharanagati is a collection of songs about the different limbs of surrender, different kinds of surrender to Krishna. From the Bhagavad Gita, those of you who have studied the Bhagavad Gita, you know in the 18th chapter, text 66, what's the verse? 18th chapter? Yes? Sarva Dharma? Right. So, Lord Krishna is saying to surrender. So, people often ask, what does surrender mean? So in the purport, Srila Prabhupada lists the six items of surrender, the six things which we're supposed to do to surrender to Krishna. First of all, he said, accepting everything which is favorable for devotional service. What is favorable for devotional service? What do you think is favorable for devotional service? Okay, prasada. Prasada is very favorable for you. What else is favorable for devotional service? Huh? Association. Association, yes. Many, many things favorable. So we should accept those things favorable for devotional. And we should reject what is not favorable for devotional service, right? What is not favorable for devotional service? Intoxication, meat eating, gambling, illicit connection with the other sex. This is not favorable. So these things should be followed strictly. You should accept what is favorable, reject what is not favorable. Then there are four more items. We should understand that Krishna is the maintainer. Krishna is maintaining the devotees, is maintaining our temples, is maintaining the planet. It's all going on by the grace of Krishna. Krishna is the maintainer and Krishna is the protector. It's Krishna who protects 
the devotees, who protects all of us from the dangers of the material world. So a devotee understands Krishna to be his maintainer and his protector. It's very important for us to have that kind of consciousness. If we think I'm maintaining by my hard work, I'm working in my job, making them, it's Krishna who is maintaining. And it's Krishna who is protecting. It's not because you go for a walk every morning, you keep good health. It's not, but Krishna protects the devotees. And we should, so then there are two more items. One is, we should have no desire separate from Krishna's desire. Only Krishna, accepting what is Krishna's desire, not what our desire is. That is another item of surrender. And then finally, we should always be meek and humble. That is another sign of surrender, when one is very meek and humble. So these are the six items of surrender. And Bhakti Vinod Thakur wrote songs about each of these different items a number of songs about each item. And we have some of the songs in our Vaishnava song book. Some of you will know, we sing this one song, Shuddha Bhakata Charana Renu Bhajana Anukula Bhakata Seva Paramasiddhi Premalati Bhakti Vinod Thakur is describing the different things which we can do which are very favorable for devotional service. So in this song, Shuddha Bhakta is describing what is favorable. He's saying the dust from the feet of the devotees, the water which has washed their feet and the remnants of their footstep, very powerful items. And then Bhakti Vinod Thakur goes on and he says, Madhava Titi Bhakti Janani Yatani Parana Madhava Titi Bhakti Janani Madhava Titi means the holy days like Ekadasi. There, Bhakti Janani means the mother of devotion. Jana, Janani Sachi, Mother Sachi, the Bhakti Janani Madhava Titi Bhakti Janani. The holy days, like Ekadasi and Janmashtami, coming not very far away, they become the mother of devotion for those devotees who take shelter of them. So, Lord Krishna is very pleased when we observe these different days, like Ekadasi and Janmashtami, all the different holy days. We have our Vaishnava calendar every year we're publishing. So we should take note of the different holy days. And Ekadasi, it's nice for the devotees to come together on Ekadasi and to chant the Lord's holy name and to hear some Krishna Kata. I know our devotees in Bangkok we always have a program on the Ekadasi. All the devotees are working, but still they will come in the evening, just like you're coming tonight. Every Ekadasi, whenever Ekadasi is, a weekday or the weekend, they will always have a gathering and the devotees will observe the Ekadasi by chanting and hearing Krishna Kita. So it's important for us to nourish our devotion. And Krishna, Lord Krishna is pleased when we do these things. Because this is our, this is our service to Krishna. To come and to chant and to hear the kata. It's not a big service, but Krishna is pleased when he sees that we take the trouble to come here. 
You know, Johor is a big, big place these days. It took us one hour to come here tonight. So uh, it's quite far away. But still, we should take trouble for the service of Krishna. We have devotees in China. They will travel for three or four hours to come to association. On the public trains and things like that. They, it, the cities are so big, they're so big, and it's so difficult. They have to move from one side of the city to the other to get the association. But the devotees will do that. They'll take that trouble to come for the association. It means so much to them. And it means a lot to Krishna. When Lord Krishna sees us take that kind of trouble, then Lord Krishna is also pleased. We want to please Krishna. We can please Krishna by, by our service attitude. The service attitude is very important. It is not just service, but the attitude in which we render the service. If we think, oh, it's so much trouble, oh, I'm going to so much trouble, I don't know why, yeah, that's not very good. If, we're, if we have that kind of mood. Just like devotional service is described in the third canto of Srimad Bhagavatam, in relation to the teachings of Lord Kapila. Lord Kapila describes how devotional service can be in the modes. You can do devotional service in goodness, in passion, in ignorance, and it's not pure devotion. Pure devotion is above the modes. But if we do our, if we're worshipping the deity in the mode of ignorance, well, it's not pure devotion. If you come on the altar and you're in an angry mood or you're not clean like this, and then your devotional service is in the mode of passion or ignorance. We want to come to the level of goodness and go on from that. We want to please Krishna. That is the idea. Giving pleasure to Lord Krishna. How do we know if we're pleasing Krishna? Well, we will know if the devotees are pleased. Then we can understand Krishna is pleased also. When we say devotees, we mean strict devotees. You know, some devotees may be pleased that you give them some uh, tofu or some uh, other things, you know, things with rajasic things. But the strict devotees won't be too happy with that. They like to see the food prepared for Krishna's pleasure. So we want to give pleasure to Krishna, we have to know how to please Krishna, we have to know what Krishna likes. So from the Bhagavad Gita we learn some of the things which Krishna likes. Krishna likes especially when we are trying to teach devotional service to other people, when we are trying to give them Krishna consciousness. That is very pleasing. In 18th chapter, Lord Krishna said, Nachatasman manusheshu kashchan me priyakritama. Lord Krishna said, There's no one more dear to me than that person who is trying to give Krishna consciousness. And Lord Krishna also described how much he appreciates devotees like Narada who are chanting the holy name. Lord Krishna said, I am not in the Vaikuntha, I am not in the, in the hearts of the yogis meditating on me, but I am wherever my devotees, like Narada, are chanting my holy name. So the Lord is very pleased with these kind of things. 
a devotee chanting the holy name with care and attention and regularly, faithfully chanting the holy name and someone else is trying to distribute the holy name, distributing the message of Krishna. Just like our Bhagavad Gita, for many years we've been trying to distribute the Bhagavad Gita and we have our book marathons every year and we try to encourage people to take books. We used to always go out on the street and distribute them. Param Brahma was a book distributor when I first met him. He was a book distributor, distributing many books. And the devotees would go to Batu caves at the, whenever that, uh, when they had the, in January, what's the festival again? Tatusam, right, Tatusam. So we would, the devotees would go to the Batu caves and carry the books up into the cave and stand there and distribute books to people. And we used to distribute a lot of books that way. Nowadays, of course, it's a bit easier. We have a congregation and we ask the congregation to take books. And the congregation are also very helpful and they often they will oblige and they will take copies of the books and they will distribute themselves. Often they may give them freely or they may they may be given some payment for them, but often they're just given out freely. So that's common around the world these days, that the congregation have taken up a lot of that work to distribute the books. One reason is, of course, because we don't have so many people living in the ashram. We, didn't, we don't have the young brahmacharis like we used to have. The brahmacharis got older, they got married or different things like that. But still, uh, book distribution goes on. And we distribute the books because we know it's very pleasing to Prabhupada. Srila Prabhupada would always be anxious to know how are the books selling and what do people say about my book. So Prabhupada would always push the devotees to distribute the books. And we're continuing, even though Prabhupada departed so many years ago, we continue to distribute. And of course we have many other books now. We're doing a lot of other things, innovative things, to try to give people Krishna consciousness. We have our different uh, courses like we have the ISKCON Disciple Course. ISKCON Disciple Course is very important. Everyone who is a member of ISKCON, they should know about what, is the, what, what the duties of a disciple are. And we should know also about how to recognize the qualification of a spiritual teacher. And we should understand the importance of our relationship with Srila Prabhupada. That Srila Prabhupada is the Shiksha Guru for all the devotees. And every devotee is encouraged to have a relationship with Prabhupada. So that's one of the functions which is achieved from the ISKCON Disciple Course. I think Shanti Vardhana Prabhu comes and teaches it, or maybe Shiva Chaitanya, people like that come. I taught it here myself years ago. So ISKCON Disciple Course is one course, then we have also the Gita Gyan Course. Everyone can, should study Bhagavad Gita. One chapter a day, one hour, just takes one hour and they have PowerPoints and they explain the main points from a chapter in the Bhagavad Gita. It's important for us to know Prabhupada's books. We should read. I, I remember I was a new devotee. I had just joined the Hare Krishna movement. 
And what happened was some reporter came from a magazine in London and he wanted to interview a devotee. So somehow he was talking to me and I didn't know anything. You know, I hardly, I just joined the Hare Krishna movement. I chanted Hare Krishna a bit and I really didn't know any philosophy. But I'd been reading a lot of Mayavadi books. So <laughs> uh, this reporter was speaking to me and he was asking me things and I was quoting Mayavadi things, nonsense things, you know. And somehow when he wrote his article, he put some of the things which I said. And Prabhupada was given the article and he said, this is nonsense, who said all this? <laughs> and Prabhupada then got, he said, everyone must study my books, they have to learn the philosophy. So, this is very important for us. We all members of Hare Krishna movement, you have to learn the philosophy. That this is a very good thing. If you cannot convince them, then it means you have so much money for your education and it's all useless. It's just for some job, just to get, and often you can't get the job. You learn something and then you can't get the job, you, you have to do something. Just like I studied engineering. <laughs> Am I an engineer? No. But that's a typical example. We spend so much time cultivating mundane knowledge, which is all useless at the time of death. But if we learn the Krishna conscious philosophy, it will give us the greatest benefit. So the Gita Gyan course is there, the Bhakti Shastri course is there. Many of you must have already taken initiation. And when you take initiation, you may want to go on to the second initiation. In Krishna consciousness, we have the first initiation where we give the chanting of the holy name. And the second initiation is where you get the Gayatri mantra, the mantra initiation. So, some people give more importance to the second initiation. Actually, Srila Prabhupada said the first initiation is sufficient in itself for perfection. The first initiation it can take you back to Godhead. Because you're chanting Hare Krishna mantra, you're taking shelter at the lotus feet of Lord Krishna. So, that can take you back to God. Gayatri Mantra can help to accelerate your process back to Godhead. So the Gayatri Mantra, the second initiation, it probably said in one letter, he said, that completes the process of initiation. But you get the first, the, you take the Hari Nam initiation, first initiated into Hare Krishna Mantra, and then second initiation is given. But nowadays, you want the second initiation, you have to study Bhakti Shastri. Jagpataka Swami, he's also doing like that. He made the rule, anybody who comes to him for second initiation, they should have completed the Bhakti Shastri course. Why? Because you want to be a Brahman. The second initiation is a Brahminical initiation. A Brahmin should have knowledge. You shouldn't be an illiterate Brahmin. Right? We want educated Brahmins. That's important. So Prabhupada wanted we study his books. Well, Bhakti Shastri is not a very difficult course, but it takes you through the Bhagavad Gita, the main points. We don't go deep into the Bhagavad Gita, but you get the main point. You could study Bhagavad Gita at a much higher level. But we're simply presenting the overview. Get the overview, the main points. Bhagavad Gita, Ishopanishad, Nectar of Instruction, and Nectar of Devotion, first part. So not a lot. And many young children have completed the Bhakti Shastri. It's not a great challenge for people. So you should all try to study this. And even if you, there was one lady, 
she was doing the Bhakti Shastri and she did it in Tamil. But she did it from Salem and they're very strict. So somehow she failed. You know. But still, she did the course. That's the main thing. And there was another lady, uh, she was a cook in the temple. And she said, I'm doing all the cooking. She said, why I have to take this course? But Jagpataka Swami explained to her, and we also told her, that you take the course, whether you pass or not, it's not important. But you have to go there and hear. You have to hear this knowledge. It's very important. She said, I cook, I just cook. No, but you see, if, if you're just cooking, you don't know why you're cooking, who you're cooking for, then after some time you give up cooking, you go away. And so it's important that we do get some education and then your cooking will be better. So like that, one second initiation, you must complete the Bhakti Shastri. It doesn't take very long. You can do it online. To to date, the Malaysia from Ipoh, right? Yeah. Doing it. Yeah. From from a Prabhu's organizing from Ipoh, they're facilitating. To date, well, three nights a week, Monday, Wednesday, Friday night, one and a half hours each time. Two hours. Two hours. Two hours. Two hours. Two hours. Two hours. I was teaching, I was teaching two days a week, three hours each time. <laughs> Very tiny. <laughs> three hours. They had a lot of questions. You know. Anyway, uh, only two hours for Malaysia. So second initiation, complete the initiation, first study Bhakti Shastri, and then you can get the second initiation. It's important for us to get transcendental knowledge. How do you get transcendental knowledge? Lord Krishna describes in the Bhagavad Gita, Tadvadi Pranipatena, Pariprishni. Try to learn the truth by approaching the spiritual teacher. So this is the process of developing transcendental knowledge. You approach the spiritual teacher, and then inquire from him. Pari prashnena. The Tadvadi Pranipatena. First of all, Pranipatena. Fall down. Submit yourself in, with humility. Don't be proud. That's, that's required for taking initiation. You have, we have to give up our false ego. We have to submit to someone. So some people, for some people, it's very difficult to do that. But that's what's required to cultivate transcendental knowledge. We have to submit to another person. Then we have to inquire from him. And then service. So these things are required. This is the qualification of the devotee, the prospective disciple that he will do these things. And at the same time, the spiritual teacher has to also be qualified. Upadeshanti uh, te jnanam, jnaninas tattvadarshana. So the spiritual teacher should be tattvadarshi. He should have seen the truth. Not only has he seen the truth, but he can reveal it to others also. You get some people they say, yeah, I know the truth. What is it? I can't put it into words. You know? They say, they say I've seen the truth. What is it? Oh, I can't tell you. I can't explain it. Then what's the good? They haven't got the full realization. So it's important. Not only have they seen the truth, but they can also reveal it to other people as well. So this is the requirement for the spiritual teacher. The spiritual teacher also has to have been trained by another spiritual teacher. We have to, we, we come through the line of the succession. We have to re render service, just like Srila Prabhupada. 
He rendered service to his Guru Maharaj. He took initiation from Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati and he served him. And then he associated with other Godiamat sannyasis and he rendered service to them and he helped them in establishing centers of the Godiamat. So this is the process. You render service to the devotees and then by their mercy, just like at school, you go to school, the good students, they will become the teachers in the future. Super. I have to teach you. <laughs> right? So good students, they become the teachers. The same way in devotional service, you practice strictly Krishna consciousness, you go on, you can also become spiritual teacher. We need many spiritual teachers for our Krishna Consciousness Movement. We need many. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu has instructed everyone to become a spiritual teacher. He was in Kurmadesh and the, the Brahmin from Kurmadesh wanted to leave his home, leave his family and go with Lord Chaitanya. But Lord Chaitanya chastised him and said, no, he said, you stay here, and whoever you meet, you tell them about Krishna. And in this way, you become also guru and save the land. So Lord Chaitanya said, Amaraga guru hana tara e desh. Yari deki tari kaho Krishna upadesh. Lord Chaitanya had given this very important instruction. Everyone should become the guru. Amaraga guru hana tara e desh. He wants everyone. You may not like to take disciples, that's okay, you don't need to take, but you can give instruction, you can tell people about Krishna. There are different kinds of guru. There is Shiksha guru, there is Diksha guru, there's Abhatma Pradaksha guru, the one who shows the path in the beginning. All right? And you have uh, Pita guru, Mata guru, <laughs> like that. Mother and Father, Guru, there are many different kinds of spiritual teachers. So everyone, on the request of Lord Chaitanya, they should take up this order and become Krishna conscious. First, learn the science of Krishna yourself and then also distribute it to other people. It's very important. If you don't distribute what you know, then the knowledge which you have will gradually dwindle and evaporate. So it's very important that whatever you know, you try to distribute it, tell other people about it. Prabhupada gives an example about water in a clay pot. If you'd gone to India in the 1970s, uh, there, we kept water in the clay pot and the clay pot's porous and it keeps the water very cool. Even if you put the water a little warm because it's in the clay pot, it will gradually become cool because the, the water is being evaporated and the water is cooling. But the problem is the water is evaporating, the level is going down. and what you, and, and similarly, our knowledge, the transcendental knowledge which we have about Lord Krishna, if we don't use it to distribute, to tell people about Krishna, then it will just evaporate, it will just dry up. Just like I've seen many people did the Bhakti Shastri course and they learned the verses in the Bhagavad Gita. But after some time you ask them, do you remember that verse from Bhakti Shastri? And they, and they all forget, right? They forget. They learn, they forget. Means they never used it. They learned it to pass the exam one day, and just like, you know, when we study, you learn things for the exam, immediately after the exam, forget it, you know? Leave it, drop it all, don't need it. So people treat Bhagavad Gita slokas like that also, 
They learn the slokas and then they forget everything. So, important, you use what you know. You use it to distribute Krishna consciousness to people. So it's good to do some kind of temple program in your home every day. Many of you, I know you're keeping an altar at home. It's good to do an RT. You should have an RT. You should have some kirtan, do kirtan, chant the different songs. Otherwise you don't know them, right? We get people, we ask them, well, come on, we're going to do Tulsi Puja. Oh, Tulsi Puja, where's the songbook? <laughs> they, they don't know the song, don't know the words. We're supposed to sing these songs every day, and they don't know. It's shocking. We should know everything. So Prabh Prabhupada wanted that. We have to know all these things, we have to. Just like we will say every day, Shikshastikam prayers. And, and then we would say also ten offenses in chanting the holy name. So, you do these things every day, then it, it's not difficult to remember. If you're saying them regularly. If you don't do regularly, then it's a problem. So we're encouraging all of you, nice devotees, this is sa sadhana, do sadhana, do your nice chanting, worship Krishna. Lord Nityananda and Haridas went door to door to fall at the feet of people and beg them, Bolo Krishna, Bajo Krishna, Koro Krishna Shiksha, chant the names of Krishna. Worship Krishna and read the books about Krishna. Very important for us. If you do these things, then you will always be in Krishna consciousness. Right? So, Suresh Prabhu is here, right? Did you offer obeisances to Prabhupada? Go and offer obeisances to Srila Prabhupada. So this devotee accepting initiation this evening, this is Suresh Prabhu. He's a very old devotee. Rasaraj was saying they came to Krishna consciousness together, just about, was it? They were both brahmacharis at that time. I'll let you know how long, how long have been there. So Rasaraj has got two grown-up daughters now. And and Suresh Prabhu has got three children. The youngest is there, just now. So Suresh and his wife, what happened, I was hearing, during the lockdown, during the lockdown, they were both, because they both worked, they were in Singapore. And they got locked down in Singapore. Their children were at home in Johor. But their three children were in the home of Giri Prabhu and Mahadir. So they're very fortunate. The three children are very nice devotees. And they were doing nice kirtan for us last night. So it's very good. You have children, you want to give them Krishna consciousness, to bring them up in Krishna consciousness. If your child is not a devotee, then what's the use? You might as well have just pass your this not very good. So we we are very glad to see that Suresh Prabhu brought his children up, is bringing them up to be devotees. We hope they will go on to become nice devotees. We need the youth, the youth to take up Krishna consciousness, you know. We need the young men to join this Krishna consciousness movement and do more preaching, be active, traveling. We invite the younger men, come and travel with us. Sometimes Shiva Chaitanya Prabhu, well, Shiva Chaitanya will get all the young boys, like teenage boys, teenage boys, take them with them and travel around Malaysia. 
And it's very nice, you get to travel, visit the different places and have programs. So here's Suresh Prabhu. So his three children all have nice devotee names, right? Yes. Bhagwat Ananda. Then uh, the street is given by Maharaj in a while. Maharaj or a spiritual journey in Maharaj. Maharaj. 